All right. Uh, well, welcome to the Toot Your Own Horn podcast, episode number three. We've got a special guest today, uh, Vinny Chelcheski. Did I say that right? It's very close. C. Chelsky. C. Chelsky. C. Chelsky. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. I've been trying right, to listen, get that. I don't, care, I don't care what you call me as long as you call me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Um, so this podcast is kind of uh, the idea around it is to just help give players a resource to improve their playing over time. I find that, you know, if you're not practicing, if you're not thinking about trumpet, if you're not working up your skills constantly, then you just stay stagnant or, you know, step, you know, take step backs. Um, so in the spirit of that, I'd like to ask you some questions. Yeah, man. Fire away. Um, so I, I saw in one of the podcasts that you were on recently that, um, you're into fitness yeah i'm i i love powerlifting, bodybuilding you know cardio nice. i have to do a lot of that especially like being in the army um i was wondering how you find that correlates to your trumpet playing like does it correlate positively absolutely riding uh my my main um my main uh, fitness apparatus is a bicycle. If you could, if I could turn the screen, I got my, I have my bike on a trainer over here, um, Bluetooth trainer, and you go into this kind of imaginary world that's got a lot of hills and some dinosaurs and all that stuff. It's called Zwift. Um, the direct correlation for me is um, is endurance. Um, you know, when you are when you're in a six or eight hour session, it's not just about your chops. It's about your whole infrastructure, you know, sitting up and, and, and having to be so focused. That's the other thing that it helps is focus. And obviously with, for me as a larger cy cyclist, I used to be over 300 pounds, 313. And I run about 215 now. So, um, and that's been a long, long, long journey. Um, that that's fairly well documented. Um, but, uh, you know, um, being a being a larger cyclist going up the hills um, is particularly challenging for me. So when I first started, I would avoid hills at, at all costs because they hurt so bad. But really um, embracing them and going up them as 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 just slow as molasses in January. Um, but it really increases the lung capacity. Our lung capacity as trumpet players is already pretty expanded because of the way that we breathe. But uh, that is the most direct correlation uh, staying in shape for me um, is the ability to um, catch and hold and breathe and pace through long phrases uh, more easily because of your conditioning. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I should do more uh, cardiovascular training as well. <laughs> uh, I'll admit I'm not these power lifters are often not big into the cardio. <laughs> yeah, that's that's 100% true. You know, I think I might take up uh, the advice there, though, uh, especially because uh, I guess it, just in the army, like everybody loves to run. So it's always running and I'm, I'm just not a big runner. So maybe I'll get it. I'll get myself a bicycle and I'll enjoy that more. <laughs> Well, you, you see a lot more stuff and, and, you know, it, it really is. I mean, you know, if you can get your heart rate, you know, you, I've got the, all the metrics I've got the, like pedals that tell you, you know, how much power and, you know, it, it, and I've got, you know, heart, heart rate uh, band that I wear. And then this watch right here will tell you everything, uh, even the sex of your next child. I mean, it's got <laughs> ages and pages and pages of metrics and, and you can see, uh, you know, incremental, um, improvements and i think that's really key and and finding a cardio that you know that you love yeah because you know you love to power lift you're going to do it four or five times a week right yeah you sure. love the way it makes you feel you love the progress that you see you got to find a cardio that's that's the same way it's like practicing the trumpet you have to love to practice in yeah. order to do it for three or four hours a day you really do i mean you know if you don't love to practice you might as well go on and be something else because you're not going to, you know, if you're forcing yourself. When I was nine years old and I first started, uh, my parents made me practice a half hour a day and I thought it was torture. <laughs> and then I started getting a little bit better than some of the older students in my school. And, and I suddenly realized what the correlation was and then became just a voracious uh, practicer. So cardio would be the same thing for sure. Awesome. Um, so when it comes to like any issues that you've had in the past playing wise, what do you recommend for um, maybe less advanced players that to help them self-diagnose, 
you know, I, I find that that's a common thing that people will come to me with problems or, and they just, they don't know how to kind of guide themselves into a certain direction so they can help themselves learn like, you know, what they need to do on a bad chop day, or, you know, if they've got a consistent problem that they just can't seem to get there, get through, you know? Sure. Um, I think as trumpet players, a big piece of the puzzle for us is nutrition mm. and, uh, and water intake. Yeah. So I drink probably, I drink a gallon of water a day. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, start, I didn't go from an eight ounce glass to a, a gallon a day in, in, in a week. Yeah. You know, you have to, you have to just kind of incrementally increase that. So basically the, you know, the, the, the experts say, um, you know, one cut your weight in half and that's how many ounces. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you should be drinking hundred ounces a day. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, coffee doesn't really count. Sodas certainly don't count. You should cut those out altogether. Um, yeah. But I drink coffee, I drink um, water, and um, a, like occasionally a fizzy water, and then um, a, very occasionally uh, a tequila or a glass of wine. <laughs> Neither <laughs> one of those can either. But um, so, so first thing you do is, if you're having a bad chop day, my very first teacher said, especially when you're playing a trumpet, you never have bad days. You have good days and you have great days. And it's really carried me through a lot of very low points in my, <laughs> in my life. Career. So, so if you can make that one little change in your attitude, I'm playing the trumpet. It's like fishing. Even if you don't catch anything, you're still fishing, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, um, so what I would do is, and what I try to do on the rare occasion that I teach is you try and eliminate the variables. So you may be having trouble in a commercial situation going, you know, but if you try and work on just that, um, it, it's really, you're probably not going to improve a great deal. So it's tempo, it's what octave you're doing it in. Um, you know, in, in the sessions that I do, that will, you know, you'll be holding a note, a G on top of the staff. Bam, bam, and you got to go to a, a G above that, you know, very quickly without a break, no reset, no nothing. You just got to be able to do it. So interval studies. So Rome wasn't built in a day. You're not going to correct these problems overnight. Um, but so the first thing is diet, you know, stay away from salt late in the day. Don't eat a big, you know, uh, uh, container of popcorn before you go to bed. First thing in the morning, you should drink, you know, uh, 16 to 32 ounces of water right away. It acts like a plow through your body, gets rid of all the impurities, starts to get the lactic acid and all those things that are that have repaired overnight starts to wash all that stuff out of your chops and the rest of your body you feel great continue to drink water during the day and break your issue down if you're having a specific issue if it's tonguey break your issue down to the very lowest common denominator and work on that slowly with a metronome so if somebody's having trouble with single tonguey da, 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 start like that Go chromatically, starting on a low C. And do that, at, that's about what, 90 beats a minute, something like that. Every day, start at 90 beats a minute. Every day, increase the metronome one tick. And in 30 days, you're going to be playing that same exercise at 120, and your body and your chops will never know the difference because you're you're slowly trying to improve so i think you got to look long on these things i don't know did that make any sense oh no yeah that makes perfect sense i i've, I've thought about that a lot too especially with the the lifting stuff that nutrition just plays a huge role when you're not eating well or you got too you're right too much salt not enough water like your 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 chops are just going to feel like garbage there's no way around it <laughs> sleep is really important too. find yeah. out what find out what your optimum number of hours is. And, and, you know, you're not always going to be able to get it. You may have a late gig and then on a Saturday night and then have to do a church gig in the morning. Th those are the exceptions. But generally, if you're a seven hour person or an eight hour person or a six or a 10 or whatever you are and, and consistency too, you know, yeah. going to bed around the same time and trying to wake up around the same time. And, you know, um, 
setting an alarm. You'd be amazed. I mean, you guys in the army probably, you know, you have to get up early most of the time anyway. But the yeah. things that you can accomplish before noon, if you get up at six or seven, I mean, you're done. The rest yeah. of your day is like, what am I going to do now? You know what I mean? And and you'll find ways to fill it up. But yeah, that, I think that's, I, I think those are those are important things for sure. Awesome. Uh, so what advice would you give young trumpet players today trying to start a career? I know like the environment's a lot different now with the uh, so much, so many things going online. Uh, do you have any advice for, for younger players on that? Well, I guess decide what you want to do. Do you want to, do you want to teach? Um, you, you know, um, if you want to teach uh, on the collegiate level, we all kind of know what that takes uh, as far as education goes. Find a great school, find a teacher that will teach you how to be not only a player, but a great teacher. Really, really take as many lessons with as many different guys. Get with Bobby Shue, you know, take uh, from Greg Wing, uh, find Joey Tartell up at Indiana. Um, there's so many great teachers, man. You know, find find those guys. And what you'll find is you'll find your your soulmate with regard to teaching. And then you'll model like all the Adam guys. They all teach with love and kindness and make a beautiful sound and this is the most important thing they have churned out some ungodly trumpet players you know what i mean and that's because of the because of that because of that uh method so decide if you want to teach decide if you want to teach and play um you all of our basics are rooted in kind of classical music the arbins the Clark studies, all of the, all of those are based in classical music. The skills that you attain from getting a level of mastery from classical music transfer into jazz playing. Because if you come up with an idea, you have to have the flexibility and the abilities and the technical prowess to be able to translate what's in your brain or in your soul out the end of the trumpet. All of those skills then translate to commercial playing and commercial playing you know fortunately for me that's how i've made my that's how i've made my living it's why i started vinnie and the hitmen um because commercial music um you come to nashville i met a tenor player a couple months ago a young tenor sax player and i said hey man you know welcome to town I, tell me about yourself 25 years old just got his masters i said well what do you want to do and he said well i really want to play jazz full time and i said well you know you're in Nashville, Tennessee, right? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think I can play three or four nights a week. And if you go to the local jazz club and you have your horn on a Wednesday night when they have the jam session, if you're the host of the jam session, you make a little money. Uh, at the door, if you have a horn, they only charge you half cover. <laughs> so you're paying to play. Yeah. But if you know classical music uh, well, and you've achieved a level of mastery that is sufficient, you can work a ton of church gigs, you can do weddings, you can do all that stuff. But the real kick for me is, like I've recorded for, you know, Leonard Skinner and Bad Company and, 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 uh, and Steven Tyler on the rock and roll side of things, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, play with, you know, all those kind of guys. I've done a lot of country, I've done a lot of rock and roll, I've done a ton of R&B, I've done, um, half full half of my career is black contemporary gospel stuff. Um, I've made my living through commercial music. Um, I play the occasional church gig where I have to, you know, lean back into my classical side, but develop all of those skills. And again, find a teacher who understands this. If you go to, if you go to a school that is renowned for jazz playing and you play in the one o'clock big band, um, you may get out and you may get one of a handful of gigs playing lead with or playing jazz with a with a big band. You're more likely to be able to make a steady living playing. So you can come to Nashville and play in a commercial like a, one of the one of the uh, corporate bands and go out on Saturday, Friday, Saturday or Sunday or sometimes during the week and make three hundred and fifty to a thousand dollars a show. 
So you pop two of those together as a 25 year old person, you're living in a house with 10 other people, your rent's like 250 a month, <laughs> you can go and put whatever you want for the rest of the week, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So developing those skills, getting a fantastic foundation in classical music and do not skip this step. Super important. If you want to play jazz, jazz then lends itself to like when I get called for a session, Somebody says, I want you to write, arrange, perform, and contract these horns for my record. And all of those skills that I've acquired over the years from playing all that music go into writing and creating. Hmm. And then listen to the music that you want to play and learn it. I, you, have to, you have to play uptown funk like it's been your favorite song since it came out and 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 it's it's absolutely at the top of your list like you play it every night but then on the way home you listen to it because you like it so much whether you like it or not you have to be able to play those those things like that so finding a good teacher finding a good school and then moving forward moving forward from there somebody understands the importance of commercial music and will teach you how to play it properly september there's a there's a urban myth about a guy who showed up classical guy showed up to a wedding gig and brought his piccolo trumpet to play september because <laughs> it was high and so he went and he played it on piccolo trumpet and and i mean it's legendary and i'm like <laughs> you know yeah i mean great and and maybe the band leader loved it because it was a little you know, horn that looked like it had been put in the dryer and shrunk, but <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't the way to go, man. He, no, did not have a teacher, he didn't have a teacher that taught him yeah. you know, what's proper. It's like doing a pops concert with a major symphony orchestra, doing a disco night, disco music, <laughs> and the whole section is playing it on sea trumpets. Yeah, that's just weird. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> so yeah, learn the proper learn the proper ways for the music that you want to perform. Awesome. Uh, what what would you what advice would you have for somebody trying to start their own home recording setup? Uh, you know, I I I remember a few years ago when I first started looking into microphones and all that stuff, and I just. I was just lost for a while with the, the, the programs, the setup, like how did, did, was it just a lot of, you know, research on your own or did you, like, what did you do? Well, I did a ton of sessions at studios and still do um, where I was able to observe um, the microphones that they use that sounded best to me. So what mm -hmm. you want to do is you want to find a microphone. If you want a, a dark and smoky sound, you have to find a microphone that, 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 that transfers the sound in your head into your DAW, your digital audio workstation. Mm. Um, you know, I, I found years ago, I found a Royer Labs R121 um, for sale on Marketplace and it was cheap. And I sent it out to Royer and had it re-ribboned and that's been my go-to. And the reason why I was looking for that is because Jerry Hay and Gary Grant and Bill Reichenbach and all that crew that did all of Michael Jackson, all you know, all of everything that we that I listened to when I was a kid. Hmm. Uh, that's the microphone that they that they played on. You know, they went over to Royer and they just kind of invaded the the facility one day, and they all bought one. And and it, again, rumored that um, at one point Jerry had a, a suitcase full of them, and he would show up and he'd say, "This is what we're going to use. It's a good ribbon microphone. If you can find a good." a well-built inexpensive ribbon microphone for trumpet um it, it's really good the microphone that, that i'm speaking into today is is a barkley infinity so i've a beat it with my 121 and it is super close mm. uh, what it does for me is it translates the exact sound that i want to hear onto into ones and zeros in the digital world and it's about half the price of the royer if you can afford the Royer, buy it. Um, mm. What I what I have is both. Yeah, I have two of these, and and I have a a gaggle of the of the Royer Royer stuff too. So, f I think the first thing is um, it, it's really important to have a great microphone. Yeah. Um, spend a little bit of money on your cables. Don't buy you know five dollar cables. You want something that's pretty stout. 
that's uh, that's a good gauge because that's what's taking the sound and transferring it into. Um, so I have the Apollo X4, but any Focusrite, uh, Scarlett, any of those companies are making really great interfaces. So that is goes from the microphone and then goes into the interface and the interface then sends it on to the computer through um, and, and as far as your DAW goes, it's really, and that's the Digital Audio Workstation, D-A-W, that's what you'll hear a lot. What DAW are you using? When somebody first said that to me, I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I use Logic, which is, a, which is an Apple product, mostly because Apple works like my brain does. Like if I run into a problem, I'll usually kind of pull back and say to myself, okay, what would I do next? And I do it, and nine times out of ten, it's the answer to my quandary. Mm. So it makes sense to my my brain. I played a lot of high notes in my life, so I'm kind of dumb. But uh, so you can use. But uh, if you have an Apple computer, GarageBand is standard. And GarageBand, a stem is a stem is a stem, as long as it's flat front. So if you get an MP3 and they say I want a trumpet solo on it, line them up and start them from the beginning together, flat front. And then go to where the solo is and put the solo in. And um, when I deliver stems, say you called me, Jess, and, and said, you know, I got this tune and, and I want you to put some trumpet on it. I don't use reverb. I don't use EQ. I very rarely pan them. Yeah. I send them flat and dry. Mm. Because in this world today, they're going to take those and they're going to edit them and move them around and remove stuff and put stuff in and take a note from here and put it over here. They're going to, they're going to completely. So if you invest the time in putting a really great reverb and you got them panned perfect and they sound like the section you want to sound, they're just going to dismantle that anyway. So just right. to them and, and do your thing. So, so it's pretty simple. And um, I love talking about this stuff as you can tell. Um, so if anybody wants to get in touch with me, man, I, I, would, I would love to spend, I, I don't charge for lessons, whether it's audio or trumpet, because I believe it's, it's important to pay it forward so that, you know, we can create the next generation of recording musicians. So, awesome. you know, just DM me and we'll, we'll hook up one of these zoom meetings and it'll be great. Awesome. Um, yeah. So I had a question about, uh, lead trumpet mouthpieces um because you know when it comes to finding a normal sized mouthpiece and so this is a personal question this one's for me <laughs> um when i find a normal sized mouthpiece i got no problems i around a three ish rim you know c cup that that works pretty good for me right i play on a, a monet b6 i think i think it's b6 yeah and that's around a 3c that feels great if I put it in a 3C, Bach 3C, that feels great. But when it starts getting into lead trumpet mouthpiece territory, I've had to switch around so many different times. I still don't quite have it locked in because what ends up happening is I just feel like it's, e it's either too small or too big. And when it's too small, it's like, as soon as my chops start to swell up a little bit from playing, uh, I start having the response issues, you know? And I've been able to mitigate some of that by 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 getting a mouthpiece with the where the inner bite is a lot more harsh, gives my chops a little bit more room, but um, that's like the best solution I've found. So I've been trying to look for mouthpieces that that kind of have that going for them, and that's been yeah. helping a lot. But uh, yeah, man, it it's such a it is such a personal thing because when you talk about that inner bite being sharp and that's what works for you, that, yeah. that, what you get from that I think is you get accuracy incredible accuracy and you do the concept is that because it's sharp and it goes down so quickly that you can fit more swollen meat in there which is what you need to do yeah that's that is that is true but if you don't have that um hmm, there are some cats that can pick up a 3c and play a double C or a high G or play a lead line, use it musically. And it's got that sound, man, that right. lead sound that you love, like Wayne Bergeron or Roger Ingram, or, or I mean, there's just, you know, and you can go back scads and scads of years. Um, 
you know, to talk about that. Um, man, the, the best advice that I can give is get somewhere. I use almost, I use almost exclusively Steve's Steve Patrick stuff. Hmm. He and I've been buds for a long time. Patrick mouthpieces com, I think, but, uh, <clears throat> what Steve has done is, uh, he, <laughs> he's, he's super good at sort of looking and listening to you and being able to tell you what is going to work for you. So he's got a commercial line, I think that would work for you because it's not a big padded See, like I use wide, flat, and then they just kind of, they, they go down first and then they're shallow across the bottom, hmm. but they, but they don't have that sharp rim because of the way my infrastructure is um, right here on this right side. If I lean too hard into that, I start to get a little irritation on the inside. And I think See. it's the way, you know, it has so much to do with your dental dental structure. Infrastructure. Like your thing is you've got smile for me. You've got two front teeth that are, that are larger. I can't tell what's going on on the bottom. That looks so right here. That, yeah. And, and that's, that's actually good because it gives you a buzz point. Um, you know, um, we've got a guy down here in Nashville who's a trombone player named Billy Huber. And if you ever run into him, just have him play. Because everything in his whole face, Steve Patrick's the same way, everything in their whole face kind of goes forward. Their teeth are a little bit pushed out and they come in together as a point. And right there at the center, they've got a perfect buzz point. Um, and Billy can play trumpet double Gs and As and B flats. It's, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. So <laughs> what I would say is, <clears throat> he's got a whole commercial line that's wide and flat and shallow. I don't think those are the mouthpieces for you. I think the mouthpiece for you is his, um, it, he's got kind of a hybrid between a classical, what would be a typical classical mouthpiece, your, your Monet or your, or your Bach three C and the commercial. So he takes the rims. It appears as if he takes the rims from the classical pairs them. So they, they, they're the shape that you want and then they go down first and that gives you the perception of having more room in the mouthpiece and then they're flat across the bottom a little more flat across the bottom and a wide variety of of drills and back bores and all that kind of stuff i would get um i would make the trip up here set up an appointment and sit with him at his house he's got a bonus room up there and uh, if you can catch him when he's not busy He'll sit down and you tell him what you're playing, what you want to achieve, and he can put four or five mouthpieces out in front of you that'll give you a good idea of, of what's going on. I have a lot of them, so let's talk offline, and, and maybe I can send you some and you can see you know what you think of them. Sure. The other thing about trying a mouthpiece is this. You're going to sound different and maybe better on a particular mouthpiece, and then after about two weeks, that honeymoon period is going to be over and you're going to sound and feel like yourself again. You have to be in the absolute best possible shape to try a new mouthpiece. If your chops are down yeah. or you haven't been practicing as much or your endurance is down or whatever the deal is, almost anything is going to make you sound better, but long term, it's not going to work. So right. you have to be in great shape. So if you know that you're coming to Nashville, you got an appointment with him, say in mid-November, right? November 15th. Mm -hmm. You start now because you have about eight weeks to really dial it in and really, same thing with trumpets. If you're trying trumpets, man, if you're going to go to ITG, you better be in the best shape of your life because you're going to play a hundred different trumpets. And you, and you're, if you're on the safari and you're looking for one, you got to be in great shape. So let, let well, you and I can talk offline, but I really think that that, that, that middle of the road, combination of commercial and classical is going to be what helps you and may help some other people too great yeah no that yeah that's great um and i did play on one of uh steve patrick's mouthpieces before this is how i found out about my preference for the inner bite so that's that's great yeah i'll have to i'm not too far from nashville either so i i might actually do that <laughs> yeah, let me know man we'll hang out we'll have lunch and and we'll go over there and and uh, and talk about trumpet. You know. Yeah, that'll be great. I mean, I've got a lot of leave coming up because I'm, I'm moving soon to Virginia. So, yeah. Nice. nice. Um, so we've only got about nine minutes here. Um, I wanted to ask you about: Do you have a practice routine that you get into? And 
if you do, because this is something I've, I've struggled with too, is how do you keep the routine from becoming too, let's say tyrannical, you know, where, where it's like, you know, cause you, you, like what you said before, you want it to be fun. You want to have a good time you, you, or else you're just not going to practice. Right. And you're not going to get good if you don't practice. So, so how do you build something that's consistent enough, but not so consistent that you can't have fun with it? You know, there are things I've been developing a routine since 93 when I left the house without warming up and went to a jam session. I played okay, but I didn't play as well as, and I was trying to establish myself in town and I thought, you know, I'm never going to leave the house again without being completely re uh, prepared. So um, mostly what I do for, for years and years and years, I had to do the whole routine to feel like I was warmed up. Recently, within the last two or three years, I've, the, of the same routine, I got about a 15 minute thing that gets me where I need to go. And then the rest of it is kind of maintenance and, and job building. So I made sure that there were things in there um, that I would really never master. Mm. Like when you're doing da, de, oh, ee, oh, ee, oh, ee, oh, ee, oh, ee, oh, when you're doing that, you know, I've heard guys go, be, wee, 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 wee. I mean, I've heard them just rail through that so fast and, and the flexibility is beautiful. You know, it's incredible. And then they can play a high C and that's about it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, yeah. so that particular exercise I do slowly start slowly and I, kind of increase the tempo as I go through it. But I, but I know that I will never get to a point where I can play it and be like, okay, I don't need to do this anymore. Right. So that part of it challenges me. Um, uh, multiple tonguing and single tonguing exercises, flexibilities, finger busters, almost everything I do though is based off of, and this was, this was, um, Made me feel real, really good when I first met uh, Gary Grant, which was a huge moment in my life because a musical hero. Um, he was telling me about, you know, he thought everything was based off of the off of the chromatic scale, which I which just, you know, made me feel great because I feel the same way. I feel like if you can play a good chromatic scale, um, keys start to matter less. Like, you know, people look at six sharps and and they freak out <laughs> push you playing guitar bands man you know it, it doesn't matter you got to be able to you have to be able to solo in e concert yeah you just do because that's that's open string for guitars and if you're playing r&b or pop or or any of those things that's where you got to be so um yeah man so i start out pretty slow i start out in the middle of the horn um and and i i stay from g to g you know, before I go lower or higher, I don't play much higher than a high C and I play my routine on my big mouthpiece. I play on this, um, uh, Rex, um, Rex, I guess it's Rex Pearson, hmm. uh, Omni two. I found it up at, at uh, Blackburn when I went up and visited and it just felt really comfortable. I can get all over the horn. Now, when I play a high G on that note, on that, mouthpiece mm -hmm. it sounds like what a high g on a 2c would sound like to me <laughs> when i put it my commercial stuff and i play a high g it it makes people's eyes bleed in the first row which yeah. is only part of the goal but a good part of the goal yeah. um you know so um and because most of my concentration is in the commercial world uh, i have a tendency to spend a lot more time but i find that if you play on that big mouthpieces on that big mouthpiece for for your routine and then take a break at the end of it and go smaller it it makes it makes it makes it even easier when you're playing smaller equipment because that's really what it's all about is finding your best sound on your easiest equipment so um if i do the whole thing like i said 15 or 20 minutes and i i take a rest and i come back i put my commercial mouthpiece play on for about five minutes i'm ready to play a session mm -hmm. if i do the whole thing it's sort of um modular so according to how many times you um repeat each exercise it can be a half an hour 45 minutes or it can be two and a half hours so on a day like today i've already played for about an hour and a half um i've got a lunch thing but uh i'll play when i get home i'll play for another hour and a half or two hmm. so three to four hours a day and that is on a playing day or on a regular day so if i'm not doing a session i'll just play for four hours which sounds kind of funny. I'm only playing for four hours today. <laughs> so but if I have a session, I'll play for, you know, three or four hours and then I'll do the session. And then, and uh, so yeah, a lot 
tonguing, flexibility, long tones. I've stolen from everything. There's some Arbin stuff in there. There's some Clark studies. There's um, uh, Flexus. There's uh, stuff from, it's funny, I was looking through a couple of my etude books and, and didn't realize that I had taken from. There's a lot of stuff from, from the basic Adam routine. Um, sound has really been what's gotten me through my entire career. I'm not really good at much else. <laughs> I'm not particularly technical, but the sound of the, of, of the noise that I make seems to translate well live and, and on recording. So yes, I do. And I think it's important again, to find a teacher that will expose you to a bunch of different routines. Yeah. What I mean, and then what you do as a student, I don't mean you, I mean the people that we're talking to, the folks that we're talking to, you pick and choose from that something that makes your chops feel really super warmed up and really super comfortable, something that is super challenging that you know you will never get a hold of, right? And those two things, this should be here, this should be here, and then it should be followed by something that's that's going to be, you know, that's going to reassure you that you shouldn't quit trumpet, you should keep on practicing. <laughs> And listen, 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 man, YouTube is your friend. You, you know, there's so much stuff available on YouTube, you know, yeah. good stuff available on YouTube. Awesome. Uh, th thank you so much for your time, Vinny. Uh, I really appreciate I you, you coming longer, on the show. Man. I wish we had longer. I really do. I love, I love talking about this stuff. Yeah, well, I'll have to have you come back on the podcast soon because I've got like 20 other questions I didn't get to ask. And uh, I'll, make sure to, <laughs> I'll make sure to upgrade to Zoom Pro next time. I didn't know they had a... <laughs> Yeah, the time limit. Yeah, it kind of sucks. They just changed that this year. So it used oh, to be wow. if it was less than three people, you could go forever. But they got they kind of got smart. They want your money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay, if I may, while we have time, go go find Vinny and the Hitman on uh, on uh, Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. I, I got a website. Um, it's a great band with a great mission that's paying it forward and helping future generations to understand the importance of commercial music. Nine horns, five rhythm. It's a complete wall of sound and go, awesome. go and listen to some stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's really a fun band. Yeah. And you've got the, uh, the Facebook group too, right? The Positive Trumpet Players? Positive Trumpet Players Worldwide, man. That's an awesome place, man, where, where negativity is not tolerated. I mean, it's amazing, man. It's a self-policing group. I'll get a, I'll get a no notification almost every day that somebody said, hey, man, this is not cool. Let's get this off of here. And so we do. Awesome. Kind of, yeah. Really cool. Right. Well, thanks again, Vinny, for your time. I really appreciate it. It's been great talking yes. with you. All right, man. We'll talk soon. Oh, see you.